I'm E.G. Marshall. Once again, it's time for that journey through the world's most mysterious landscape. The complex mind of a human being. What does the mirror show you? Does the mirror know more than appears on the surface? How deeply can it probe? Consider a lady named Helen Stewart. Fred! Fred! What is it? Tell me, what is it? Look! Look at what? Look at the mirror. What about the mirror? Why well, can't you see? I'm not in it. I'm not in the mirror. I've lost my reflection. Fred, do you know what this means? Please, Helen. It means I no longer exist. It means I've... I've disappeared. Our mystery drama, Mirror for Murder, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Celeste Holm. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and by the Kellogg Company, makers of Kellogg's Special K cereal. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Future historians will look back on our times, and they will, of course, give them a name. It's fairly safe to assume that our era will probably be called the age of women. Women are no longer content merely to cook and clean and care for a man. Some women are quite vocal about it. However, these are not the ones to cause us concern. Men should worry about those quiet ones. For instance, today it's breakfast as usual at the home of Fred and Helen Stewart. This means that, although it's not even 8 o'clock, Fred has already been on the phone for the better part of an hour. But on this particular morning, quiet, uncomplaining Helen Stewart does something shocking. She suddenly reaches over and for no apparent reason disconnects the telephone. Helen, why? Why did you do that? Why did you cut me off? I don't know. But Helen... You you knew that I was talking to Senator Warren. You cut us off. Senator Warren is an old drunk. James J. Warren is the majority leader. Oh, yes, he is. He certainly is. Senator Warren is the majority leader because he makes a great many major leads, especially with his hands under the table when we're out to dinner. What are you talking about? You know, 15 years ago, if I told you that, you'd have punched the senator in the nose. Now you look at me and say, what are you talking about? Helen. Oh, Jim. Yeah. Yeah, cut off, I guess. Certainly, Jim. I'll hold on. Helen, I simply have to talk to the senator before he leaves. You might want to talk to me before I leave, too. Now, what is that supposed to mean? Just what it sounds like. Look, we can't afford an argument just before I go... When can we afford it? Darling, be sensible. The committee's considering the entire budget. You know what's at stake. Of course. And, Jim, uh, yeah, yeah, great. Tonight? Uh, no, no, no trouble at all. I'll be there. You bet. Thanks, Jim. Bye. Am I to assume from that conversation that you won't be home to dinner tonight, either? Senator Warren wants me to meet with the finance committee people for dinner. I see. Well, they have to be brief. Naturally. Uh, I'll try to cut it as short as I can. We have tickets for the opera tonight. Remember? Oh. Well, uh, I, uh, look, why don't you go and, and I could pick you up after them? If I'm going to go to places alone, I don't have to be married. Oh, Helen. Helen, just as soon as all this pressure is Poor off... Fred, I... you're having so much trouble trying to fit me into your schedule. What are you doing New Year's Eve? I resent that. Do you? 
Well, if you didn't want me to go into politics, you should have said so. I don't recall that you ever asked me. Darling, this is the big break. Jim Warren is letting me write this bill. It'll be known as the Stewart Act. It'll revolutionize the concept of education throughout the state. From here, I can run for national office. First the House, then the Senate. Uh huh. Yes, well, write me a letter. Let me know how you make out. Oh, I want you to help me. Help you? How? Well, just, you know, just... Don't add to my... To your problems. Is that what you're trying to say? No. Just be a nice, quiet, obedient little lady. Is that what you mean? Oh, Helen, you can twist the meaning of everything Fred, you say. Fred, I'm having a problem. Oh, good Lord. Say 30. Fred, we have to talk about yes, it. Yes, but does it have to be this minute? Well, sometimes you have to sit here and just look at me and talk to me and concentrate on me as if I were a human being worthy of your time and your attention. Helen, you know that I love you. Mm, yeah, but that's not enough. You see, something's happening to me, and I'm frightened. What could be happening? I'm scared. I feel as if, as if I'm disappearing. Disappearing? Yes, disappearing, as if I'm fading away, fading out. What does that mean? As if I've become nothing, nobody. Oh, but that's... That's what. I can prove it. There are times, many times, more and more times lately, when I look into a mirror and I sort of become hazy, blurry, and then my image, my reflection isn't there. It's just gone. Helen. I'm gone. Look, I, you've got to see Dr. Gordon. Why do you keep sending me to other men, Fred? I know what's happening. I am disappearing. I'm fading out of your life. Now, that is not true. I need you more than ever. For what? We... We'll talk about it tonight. But you won't be here tonight. Tomorrow morning. I may not be here tomorrow morning. What? I may be gone. Gone? Gone where? I don't know. Where do people go when they disappear? I'll answer it. Hello? Just a moment. It's the senator's office. Should I tell him you're busy and you'll call back? How can I tell him I'm busy? Here, give me the phone. I see. Hello? Yes, I'll hold on. Helen, I... Goodbye, Fred. Where are you going? Where am I going? Fred, look in the mirror. Just look, Fred. In just a minute. Hello? Jim? Yeah. Oh, I've got all the figures, everything we need. Look in the mirror, Fred. I've disappeared. No, Jim, we've got solid proof. Where did I go, Fred? Where did I go? Please, Fred, tell me what happened to me. Jim, the opposition will simply have to throw in the towel. Nobody can afford to vote against this bill. Fred, where did I go? You can control every single dollar. Fred, I'm going to have to... Find myself. And the voters know whom to thank for it. Goodbye, Fred. Goodbye. Jim, the newspapers will eat it up. How can we possibly lose? Key to 247, please. Well, here you are, Miss Craig. How did you enjoy the skiing this morning? Fine, thank you. Planning to stay with us for a while? Well, uh, I... I know it's quiet here. We're off the beaten tourist path. I'll see. Oh, uh, you have a message, Miss Craig. A message? That's impossible. Impossible? Well, nobody... Uh, I mean, I don't see how anybody... A gentleman asked for you. For me? Yes, for Miss Helen Craig. That's you, isn't it? Yes. He said yes. to tell you that uh, he'd be waiting for you in the coffee shop. Oh, well, uh, thank you. Hello, Helen. Uh, how did you know my name is Helen? Well, I've been waiting for you the past couple of days. I didn't know for sure when you'd show. What name you'd use. So I sneaked a peek at the register. Helen Craig, huh? <laughs> Well, that's as good a name as any. What do you mean you're waiting for me? I, I don't know you. Of course not. Let me introduce myself. Mike Perry. Uh, please tell me what this is about, Mr. Perry. You know, I never believed the contact would be a dame. This woman's lip thing, it's running wild. Although, uh, a dame is smart, but 
good figure a day. You obviously have me mistaken for someone else. There's no mistake. You know it, and I know it. But you're playing it right. Cool, okay. We're ready to deal. Once again, Mr. Perry, there seems to be some mistake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, we got to set up a meet between you and my boss. He's due in tomorrow. He's got the dough and the details. Mr. Perry, please, excuse me. Sure, sure. I may want to talk to you later. You'll be around, won't you? Mr. Perry, please, whoever you are, do be good enough to excuse me. Just a minute. Who is it? Room service. Well, I'm afraid there's a mistake. I mean, I didn't know where Compliments anything. to the house. Oh. Uh, let me set this down. Well, thank you. My name is Farrell. Yes? I've been assigned as your contact. My what? Your contact. Uh, what's going on? Yeah, it's safe to talk. I've checked the room out. There aren't any bugs. I don't understand. So you're Rose Temple. I'm not any Rose Temple. You're mistaken. I'm Helen Craig. <laughs> Naturally, you wouldn't use your real name, but everybody in the department knows about you. And I consider it a privilege to work with you. Please, uh, let me explain. A, a mistake is You're been... very unorthodox, but you do get results. Well, what makes you think Simple. I'm... Simple. We knew you'd be contacted by Mike Perry as soon as you got here. I've had Mike under surveillance every minute. Now, Rose... I'm not Rose. You're absolutely right. You'll have to concentrate on your new identity. I'll call you Helen. How did you do it? How did I do what? Helen... I'm on your side. How did you get them to think you had all those diamonds? Mr. Farrell, there's something very wrong here. Okay, okay. There's certain things I'm not required to know. I was just curious. Mr. Farrell. Did Mike Perry set up the meeting yet? Mr. Farrell. Why don't you call me Jerry? You're making a big mistake. <laughs> you never relax, do you? Well, that's probably the secret of your success. I simply don't know why you both think... You'll that... have to tip us off as to where the rendezvous is so we can move in and make the arrest. Oh, sure, sure, I'll do that. Uh, look, what, what... What's that? What, look! Look at what? The mirror. What about the mirror? I... 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 Are you okay? Oh, yes! I'm fine! I'm all right! Yeah, well, why don't you get some rest, huh? I'll, uh, see you later. Operator, um, is there a doctor nearby? Well, I'm uh, not a psychiatrist. I'm just an ordinary old country doctor, you know. Well, what do you think about the mirror? I mean, the mirror, Dr. Bellows. Well, now, tell me again. Back at home, you disappeared from the mirror. Right. It could be a symbol of how unimportant you think you've become to your I husband. I know that. That's why I ran away. I thought I could find myself. Yes, yes, I see. Who are you, really? Oh, I don't want anyone to know. Well, your husband is probably worried. <laughs> how worried? Worried enough to tell the police to look for me? Well, perhaps, but let's stay with your problem. You ran away to find yourself, and a few minutes ago you looked in the mirror and you saw your image again. Is that what you're telling me? Yes, but... But what? The image I saw. Well, I've never seen such an image of myself before. I mean, I'm, I'm filled with brightness, a kind of glow. Well, look in the mirror again. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it's the same image. It almost hurts my eyes to look. I mean, what does that mean? If that's how you see yourself, then it could mean you've suddenly become important again. I mean, important to someone. Or that I'm having another hallucination. What kind? Oh, doctor, I... I'm hallucinating. I must be that I'm some sort of an agent. An agent? A double agent. <clears throat> What do you mean? That I'm some sort of secret operative and I'm posing as a member of some powerful gang. I mean, I realize this must sound... No, no, that's all right, it's all right. Keep talking, keep talking. It seems I'm here to contact some powerful racketeer, at which time there will be an arrest or a shootout or whatever happens at such a meeting. Uh -huh. I don't know. I haven't hallucinated that far yet. And uh, what form does all this take? Well, I've been approached by a man who has identified himself as a member of some gang. 
And then I've been contacted by someone who's evidently my, my colleague in a law enforcement agency. Well, does all this happen at night? I mean, could these be dreams? No, I mean, it happened less than an hour ago. I actually spoke to the gangster in the coffee shop and to the government agent in my room. Well, then, why do you say these are hallucinations? Well, how could they possibly be any anything else? <laughs> What we're up against here is reality. We have witnessed a scene between Helen and Mr. Perry, and between Helen and Mr. Farrell. It all sounded real. But Helen is a troubled lady. And either way, it's a troubled situation. If it's a fantasy, that's one kind of trouble. If it should happen to be real, it's another kind of trouble. However it goes, I'll be back with some answers when I return shortly with Act Two. There comes a time in the lives of many women when they feel unwanted, neglected. Gone is purpose, identity. And so they suddenly go out to search for that all-important identity. Such a woman is Helen Stewart, wife of a rising politician. We find her in a remote mountain resort, where it seems that two other men have found her as well, a racketeer and a police agent, each of whom thinks she is there for a rendezvous. Or is all this in her mind? Is there really a racketeer? Is there really a police agent? Are you saying, Dr. Bellows, that I'm not hallucinating? You mean that I've actually been approached? No, no, but we must consider every possibility. Well, then, what should I do? Well, in addition to everything else, Miss... uh... Craig. (laughs) Well, if you were to use that name, it's all right with me, but you really should tell me who you are. No. Ah, well, now I can't treat you if you don't trust me. Doctor... You might feel called upon to get in touch with my husband, and I just couldn't stand that. But why? If you should be in trouble psychologically, wouldn't you want him to? No. I left him so I could do something for myself. I'm not going to run back to him at the first sign of trouble. I mean, whatever that trouble is. Well, we must find out what the trouble is. First, we must make sure that you are hallucinating. How? Well, now let me see. You've been approached by two men. Uh, what are their names? Well, the one who seems to be the gangster calls himself Mike Perry. The other one, Jerry Farrell, claims to be a police agent. He works here as a bellman. Mm Mm-hmm. But how is this... Let's find out who they really are. How? Frank Winslow, who owns the place, is a close friend. I can get the information from him. Doctor, why am I doing this? I mean, those two men, I've never seen them before in my life. Why should I... You've probably seen them before. Where? Oh, in the movies, or at least men who resemble them, and you've projected yourself into a situation. What if I keep hallucinating? What if they approach me again? If they do, it's because you want them to. They help to support your your need for importance. But I can't go through life in that. What am I going to do? Now, look. You've already started to do the right thing. You're trying to come to grips with a problem. Now, remember, whatever you do, don't panic. Mm. Don't waste your energy. Mm. Just be quiet, calm, rational, and everything will be all right. <laughs> How come you ain't on the slopes? I'd rather sit here and read. Mind if I join you? Buy you a drink? I don't drink. Well, let's talk anyhow. About what, Mr... Uh, Uh, Perry. As if you don't remember. Okay. We'll talk, Mr. Perry. The, uh, the big fellow. I'm supposed to tell you this. He ain't gonna be here till day after tomorrow. Now, don't blow your stack. Believe me, I had no intention... Oh, you don't kid me, baby. You don't give nothing away. But you must be doing a burn. Really? Why? Because every day you hold that ice, the hotter it gets and the more it can melt. Oh? You were told you could have the deal tomorrow. Okay. You showed up. But where's the big fella? I don't know. Where? Ah, his daughter's getting married tomorrow. So he can't make it. 
Well, that sounds reasonable enough. Well, that's no way to do business, and you know it. So I was thinking, why not do business with me? With you? Look, the big fella can't last much longer anyhow. I mean, what if I can raise by tomorrow morning half of what the big fella offered? It's less. But you got this one advantage. Yeah? With me, you got a deal. Cash on the line. You're out. You're clean. What do you say? Uh, uh let me think about it. I didn't know you could skate. What were you doing here, Mr. Farrell? I, uh, keep an eye on you. You were observed in the lounge talking with our friend, Mr. Perry. Oh, so? So, let's sit down. Nice, quiet little table. I'll buy you some hot chocolate. And you can tell me about it. Well, I'd rather skate if you don't mind. I need the exercise. That conversation with Perry. Oh, the scheduled meeting can't take place tomorrow. Why not? The big fella's daughter is getting married. What's the new date? Day after. I don't like it. Every extra hour makes it more dangerous for you. Well, there was an alternate suggestion. Yeah? I could deal directly with Perry. With Perry? He's willing to double-cross the big fella. Oh, so Perry figures to move against his boss. That makes it very rough for you. Why? Do you agree to deal with him? I'm thinking it over, supposedly. Bad. He's given himself away as soon as he realizes you're expendable. What can happen? He'll set up a meeting place. You show up with the diamonds. You get killed. But I... That's why I have to be there. We have to get Perry first. Oh. Of course, this blows the objective the office had set up to catch the big fella, but we have to save your life, huh? All right, where are the diamonds? The diamonds? Never mind, never mind. I, it's better if I don't know. But there are no... So Perry has decided to make his move against the big fella at last, huh? I'll have to check back and find out how we're supposed to play this. And meanwhile, you have a weapon I don't know about? A weapon? Yeah. Word is that you never carry a gun. I checked out your luggage, but I can't believe you don't have something on you somewhere. Do you have a gun? No. <laughs> you know, you're too good to be true. What does that mean? You're, uh, <laughs> you're the most unlikely agent I've ever met. Well, maybe that's because I'm not a... Oh, no, you are, you are. And now I know how you made your reputation. It's that air of, um, innocence, uh, naivete. And that's your strength, your armor. Well, you can get away with that against the upper crust criminals. The what? The upper crust, the gentlemen. The con artists, the flim-flammers, those are the guys you've tangled with. Bust one of those guys, they come along quietly, but... Now, you're up against killers. Make sure I'm always close to you. Don't make a move unless you tell me. Hello? Uh, this is Dr. Bellows. How do you feel? Oh, I've been hallucinating. I think I've just had a discussion with... Both of those men. Uh, the racketeer and the government agent? Yes, doctor. Mm -hmm. And how did it go? Frightening, as it seems so real. Are you near a mirror? Yes. Uh, look at yourself. All right. <gasps> huh? What is it? I never, never seen myself in such, such clear outline, such sharp detail. I mean, such brilliant color. See, you're feeding on your fantasies. I am? These men you're talking to. Yes? Well, I had to go on the basis that anything can be possible until proved otherwise. Doctor, do you, do you mean th they can be real? Well, now I don't believe it because I checked up on them. The, uh, the so-called gangster. Mike Perry. Yes, yes. He's a partner in an export-import company in Philadelphia, a most reputable firm. And the hotel employee... Mr. Farrell. Mm -hmm. 
He's only been working there for a few weeks, but he has excellent references. Recommendations from employers that extend back over 15 years. I see. So now, we can definitely dismiss these as fantasies. Hallucinations, call them what you will. Yes, I can't tell you how relieved I am, Doctor. The situation was beginning to take a dangerous turn. Well, perhaps you'd better come over here. I'll give you some medication that will let you get some rest, you see. You have to start building yourself up now. Thank you, Doctor. I'll be there right away. Why, Doctor? Why are they so real? Because, you see, you need them. You need them to restore yourself. Uh, can't you see what's happened? What? Well, you felt as if you had been, uh, uh, wiped out. So you retreated into fantasy to restore yourself. Yes. Well, that's all right for a start, but you will have to accept reality, you know. Huh? Find yourself or your, your identity in the real world. Yes, I know. Go back to your husband. Oh, I'm not sure I want to. Hmm. Do you love him? Yes. And does he love you? Well, I think so, but what good is love if all it does is to make two people unhappy? If you love each other, you'll find a way to live together without destroying either one of you. Oh, I don't know. Oh, excuse me. Someone's come into my waiting room. I'll be back in just a minute. Go back to him? Go back to Fred? Oh, maybe if we... If we could sit down and, and try to understand... Doctor! Dr. Bellows! What happened? Doctor! Hi. Mr. Perry, what, what have you done? What does it look like? I just knocked off this quack here. That's what I've done. Why, Dr. Dr. Bellows. Hey, what's with you, kid? You like to talk to stiffs? You killed him? You killed Dr. Bellows? Hey, you'll catch on quick. But why? Why? Because he's working with the cops, that's why. Working with the cops? Sure. He's been asking questions, trying to get a make on me. You know what this means, don't you? It means he's dead. And this is real. He's dead. And this is real. She looks at the dead man lying on the floor, and then she glances in the mirror. And there she is, larger than life. Huge, grotesque. Her dress in the mirror is stained and spattered with red. But that's in the mirror. And she knows that's fantasy. But what is reality, plain and stark, is Dr. Bellows dead on the floor. And the spreading crimson stain on the carpet. That's real. That's death. I shall return shortly with Act Three. For some, life is an unstable blend of reality and fantasy. Normal people solve the problem by dreaming fantasy and living reality as nearly as they can. But sometimes, common sense, rational thinking crumble under the stress. And then, reality and fantasy vie with each other for a person's sanity. Right now, what Helen Stewart is looking at is no fantasy. It's a dead body. And talking to her is no figment of her imagination, but a living killer. He could have busted this thing wide open. And you and me could have landed in the clink. But you didn't have to... Come off it, sister. You don't need that act anymore. You've seen plenty of stiffs in your day. You even might have made your share of them, too. Now, uh, about the ice. The ice? The diamonds. You got no choice. You got to deal with me. Now it's well, me or nobody. Neither one of us can hang around here much longer. It's going to get hot. Uh, Mr. Perry, uh, you see, I, I don't have the what... The cops. The cops. The feds. And I'll bet the Interpol guys are in on it, too. 
You don't heist that kind of ice without everybody taking a hand. Hey, tell me something. How'd you doing? I want to get out of here. Oh, sure, sure. I shouldn't be bothering you with questions, but... <laughs> what a caper that must have been, huh? I've got to get out of here. Okay. Let's get back to the hotel. You bring the ice to me, I'll be in my room. And I'll have something for you, too. Yes? Uh, I'd like to make a local call to Dr. Bellows. Dr. Bellows? Yes, Dr. Bellows. Well, I, uh, I guess you haven't heard. It, uh, it only happened a little while ago, but uh, Dr. Bellows is dead. Dead? Yes, he... He was murdered. Murdered? I... I... Yes? Uh, nothing. Nothing at all. Never mind. And... It... It... It did happen. It's real. I was there. And Mike Perry... is a killer. No... No, I need... Yes? Uh, there's a bellman. You know, the man named, uh, Farrell? Yes, uh, Jerry Farrell. Yes, yes, uh, that's the one. Could could you send him up here right away? Well, I'll try to find him. Please, uh, hurry. It's it's very, very important. Uh, sure. Uh, oh, miss, uh, I have a call for you. Will you take it? A call for me? Well, who... It's from the hotel here. All right. I'll put it through right now. Hey, you got the ice? Uh, Mr. Why do you insist? I know for a fact it ain't in your room. Where have you got it stashed, huh? Mr. Perry, I, I think you, you ought to know. Maybe I know everything I ought to know. Now you pick up that ice and be in my room with it in a half hour, see? Don't, don't hang up. I've got to tell you. I, oh. oh, who's there? Open up. Who who is it? Sheriff. The sheriff. Miss Craig, I believe that's how you're registered. Yes, that's my name, Helen Craig. Uh huh. I'm Sheriff Craig here, Court County. Miss Craig, you have any identification? Oh, what do you mean? Well, any papers that could prove you're Helen Craig? Well, I. Uh, Everybody has papers, driver's license. I don't drive. Credit card. I always pay cash. Uh, and a checkbook with your name. I don't have a checking account. Ma'am, you want me to believe you don't have a single piece of paper with your name on it that could serve as identification? I, that's right. I don't suppose I have. Uh, where do you live? Where do I live? You're yeah, not from around here. You have to live somewhere. Well, I just moved. Where did you live before you moved? It was an apartment. Uh, might I know the address? Uh, 278 Northeast 86th Street, New York City. If we checked there, would we, would we ever find a record of your having lived there? Oh, yes, I, I'm sure. Now, you... look, I may be a hit constable, ma'am, but I know that New York City streets don't have northeast or northwest. Oh, well, then why? Why are you asking me all these questions? Dr. Paul Bellas was murdered less than an hour ago, and you were the last person to have seen him alive. Me? Matter of fact, someone heard shots and saw you coming out of the house afterwards. Oh, but I didn't. You didn't what? I didn't kill him. I didn't say you did. But you was there while it happened. That means you got some explaining to do. Oh, oh my Lord. Oh. Well, what is it? Uh, what are uh, you staring at the mirror for? Look, look at me. I'm, 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 I feel all of it. The whole glass. I'm, I'm, I'm twisted and hideous. Now, 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 calm yourself, miss. Now, take it easy. Sheriff, I'm not, I'm not Helen Craig. I mean, that is, I'm not anymore. I'm Helen, uh, somebody else now. Helen who? I'd rather not say. See, I blundered into something. 
I I was mistaken for somebody else, and then... Just tell us who your husband is and where you're from, and we can clear this up quickly. Please, let me do it my way. I'm running away from him, and I can't just call on him to help me the first time I get into trouble. But do you have any idea of how much trouble you might be in? Yes, yes, I, and it could ruin him. So, you see, I'd rather do it my way. What's your way? See, there's a man right here in the hotel. He can clear me. Like you, he's a law enforcement officer. What kind? Well, I, I gather federal government. A G-man? A T-man? I... Secret Service? Who? I, I really don't know, but he could satisfy you and clear me and... Who is he? Uh, better let me get there. Sheriff Clegg. Yeah. Who? What's man's name? Farrell. Jerry Farrell. <laughs> Who found him? Yeah, I see. He's dead. Okay, I'll be there right away. What were you saying about Jerry Farrell? It never rains, but it pours. First time we ever had a murder here, now we got two of them. This bellhop by the name of Jerry oh, Farrell. Oh, but, but he's the government agent. You see, he could have told you. Told you. Told me what? Sheriff. A man named Mike Perry. See, he thought I was a member of the underworld and that I'd come here to make some sort of a deal. And then Mr. Farrell, who claimed to be a secret government agent, he insisted I was an undercover agent and that I was here trying to trap this Mr. Perry. Yeah. Well, I thought it was all a hallucination. And I went to see Dr. Bellows. And I guess... I guess it was all real. What kind of deal were you supposed to make Mr. Perry? I was supposed to sell him some stolen jewels. Where are the jewels? I don't know. I never had... Then how can you sell them? Well, see, Mr. Farrell was supposed to arrange... Uh Uh-huh. It all turns on Mr. Farrell, doesn't it? Mr. Farrell's dead. Now, about Dr. Bellows. Well, I have to tell you, Mr. Perry killed Dr. Bellows. Perry, huh? Well, that's the Mr. Perry who's registered in this hotel. He's a... Oh, he's a gangster. Mike Perry. He's the one. I'm afraid this has to be the end of the line. Mike Perry's been coming to this place more than ten years. Mr. Perry's a legitimate businessman from New York. But I saw him. I saw him kill Dr. Bellows. I saw him standing over Dr. Bellows' body with a gun in his hand. I heard him. And he said he just killed Dr. Bellows. Nah, it won't be too bad for you. Well, try to believe me. I don't me. think it's first degree. That's a help right there. All these hallucinations. You probably got insanity working for you. Oh! Who knows? You can even get off. Oh. <clears throat> now, uh, you want to tell us who you are? I can't. It'll have to come out. But I just can't. Now, you just better sit there and think about it. If you're trying to protect your oh, husband... It's not that. It's... Sooner or later, we're going to find out who you are. Now, just think about it. Sit here. Yes. Sir. I'll be back. And whatever you do, don't try to leave this hotel. Sheriff, am I under arrest? What do you think? Who's there? Who do you think, baby? Oh, Mr. Perry. Well, where's the ice? I don't have it. You don't have it, huh? Now, what are you trying to do, play me for a sucker? Mr. Perry, I have tried to explain. You would never listen. I'm not who you think I am. You figure you can make a better deal somewhere else? I'm not out to make any deal. Now, will you please leave me alone? Uh Uh-uh. No. Not till I get the ice. I'm in enough trouble. The sheriff thinks I killed Dr. Bellows. Don't hand me that. It's true. I'm here to finish the deal. All right. All right. The deal. With the big fella, as you call him. That was for... Ah, give or take... A million bucks. You said you could pay half, all right? Show me your money. (laughs) Oh, I see. I see what this is. You want a deal? Where's the money? Well, the money. The money comes later. The money comes now. And I don't think you have it. You know, you could be right. That gun isn't going to help you. Oh, honey. A gun... Always help. Shoot, and they'll hear you. Not this time. I got a silence. And what do you hope? The ice is in this room. 
I'll find it. Mr. Perry. Meanwhile, I'll just take care no. of you. Don't! Uh, oh. Oh. Sheriff! Ah, uh, the sheriff. Well, what are you doing here? I saw him walk into your room, so I thought I'd listen. I was wrong about him. Oh. Hey, what's the matter? I think I'm going to faint. Well, don't. Well, will my husband ever find out? We uh, got to check with the government to see how much of this can be released. <laughs> Hello? Oh, just a minute. It's Senator Warren's office. Oh, oh, that's the call I've been... Uh, no. Tell them I'm out. Uh, Mr. Stewart isn't in right now. Yes, he'll call you back. Goodbye. Where were you? Why? Did you miss me? Oh... I can't tell you how much. Well, you see, I just went away. Oh, I missed you so much. I almost went out of my mind. Did you? I tell you how crazy I was. I'd look in the mirror and and I'd actually see your face there, even though you weren't there. <laughs> so you see, you were wrong. Your image, your reflection hasn't disappeared. Look. Just look in the mirror. What do you see? I see. Oh, Fred, I see both of us clearly. Very clearly. <sighs> oh, darling. Oh, tell me where you went and what you did. Oh, well, I didn't really go anywhere much. And I really didn't do anything. It shows you. What's reflected in a mirror anyhow? What's behind the face, you see? Next time you notice a quiet, mousy little matron on a plane, a train, or a bus, don't dismiss her out of hand. Don't dismiss us, either. I'll be back shortly. Stewart, a lesson to all of you gentlemen out there who don't see your wives' faces in the mirror anymore. Be very careful, because the next face you might see in the mirror could very well be your own. Our cast included Celeste Holm, Wes Addy, William Redfield, and Robert Dryden. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by New Sugar-Free Diet 7-Up, Contact, the 12-Hour Allergy Capsule, and Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our Mystery Theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>